Welcome back to Optimal Bone Health with Dr. Doug. Today is another Q&A day. So what we do, my team does, when we have our, our master class, which if you haven't been to, you should totally go to, it's free. But we have the ability in the master class for people to ask questions. We leave, try to leave 10 minutes at the end of the master class for people to ask questions. We go through them and we try to answer the most common questions. There are so many questions that are asked. We generally have a couple hundred people uh, show up to the master class, so we can't get through all the questions. So what I want to do now is to go through our probably top three uh, that we've been asked most recently uh, and just answer those so that most people can get the answers uh, to these questions, which we're seeing very commonly. So um, I'm going to go through uh, the, the three most commonly asked question topics. I'm going to answer those in this video, but stick around till the end because I have an announcement about our Bone Foundations course, which I want to tell you about. Um, super exciting, free offer. So stick around to the end to hear that. Okay, so one of the most common things that we've seen lately is a, a big push for people asking questions about uh, my stance on uh, eating a vegan diet and vegetarian diet and how there uh, is evidence to suggest that there's lower bone mineral density and increased fracture risk with a plant-based diet. Um, so there's been some relatively strongly worded um, uh, criticism of that approach. And when people generally uh, have this criticism, they will um, uh, point me towards uh, particular websites or particular doctors uh, that are out there uh, saying that, that eating a, a whole foods plant-based diet is the most healthy way that it's gonna save both you and the planet. So rather than play those videos and go through all those studies. I'm just going to give you the summary because we've I've talked about this, the studies um, and I don't want it to draw attention to, um, to uh, websites that are promoting what I consider to be harmful information. So I'm just going to go through the argument uh, from the beginning to end. Uh, so hopefully this helps people to understand <clears throat> if you're following a whole foods plant-based diet, or a vegan diet, there's another way to say that, if you're following a vegan diet, there are some potential risks. Now these risks can be mitigate, mitigated. It is possible to eat a whole foods, emphasis on whole foods, plant-based diet that has adequate protein, adequate nutrition, adequate nutrients, um, and you can improve your bone density and muscle mass on a whole food plant-based diet. It can be done. However, that's not what we generally see. What we see most people do when they're eating a vegan diet is to eat a highly processed food, high carbohydrate, protein deficient diet that has consequences. And that's what we see in the literature. So I looked at these videos uh, that I was pointed toward and I spent time and I listened to them and I looked at the literature. So I'm trying to be objective about this. Here's what the argument is. So the first part is the bone mineral density question. So the, the proponents of eating a vegan diet for bone health is that the studies that show that bone mineral density is lower in vegans is misinformation. And that the, these same studies, when corrected for um, uh, BMI, show that there's no difference in vegans versus other low BMI people. So that is true, so granted, but eating a protein deficient diet that is potentially nutrient poor, that leads to loss of muscle mass will lead to lower bone mineral density. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's okay. That doesn't mean that eating a vegan diet is going to somehow be protective even though you're very lean and lost your muscle mass it still is a cause of having lower bone mineral density. So saying that if you adjust for BMI, that therefore it's okay, you're still making a choice that's causing you to eat a diet that is resulting in a low BMI and ultimately a low bone mineral density. So I think that making the argument that vegans are just leaner doesn't necessarily make it okay, because again, it's still a choice. What you're saying is that choosing to eat a vegan diet and losing muscle mass is the same as other people that have either a reason that they're choosing to or potentially not, um, and they have very low muscle mass and low bone mineral density, and that that's all okay. And it's not okay because you're making that choice and you don't have to make that choice. So I think that we can throw that one out to say that, yes, you can adjust BMD loss in vegans for BMI and say that it's the same as other people who have lost muscle mass, uh, but that is still a choice and you don't have to make that choice. So let's just remove that from the equation. So really I'm more interested in fracture risk. So we could, again, put that whole bone mineral density thing aside 
And let's just talk about the studies that show fracture risk. Now, in one of the videos uh, that one particularly famous doctor that supports a vegan diet shows, he actually says that there's no increased risk of hip fracture or spine fracture and that the only increased risk in literature for vegans is wrist fracture. He goes on to then say that wrist fracture um, uh, is not a big deal and that it's more common in active people and that that vegans are just more active and that they are going to, you know, trip and fall and they're going to have more wrist fractures and that that's just a sign that that vegans are healthier and they're more active. That is a crazy and not very intelligent uh, summary of why vegans have more wrist fractures. So let me just take a few steps back. Okay. So uh, there are studies that show increased spine and hip fractures. So Let's not ignore that. I'll talk about that in a second. But when it comes to risk fractures specifically, there is a study that shows that vegans have more risk fractures. Okay. Um, to say that vegans are, as a group, more active than omnivores, there's no evidence to support that. The study certainly doesn't say that. Um, and I think that, again, that's, that is a, um, that's kind of a crazy statement. Uh, so I think that that's a very biased perspective and it's probably not true and there's no evidence to say that it's true or not true. So we really shouldn't say that this study shows more risk factors because vegans are more active. That's crazy. And then the other side of this is that vegans are, uh, because they're more active, they're going to have more risk fractures. So this explains the risk fracture risk. If we assume that vegans and omnivores are similarly active, which again, we don't really know the answer to that. Um, then the question isn't necessarily, are they falling more? And if it is, if they're falling more, is there a reason why they're falling more? Or assume that they all fall the same amount, then maybe they do just break their wrist more because they have lower bone mineral density and worse bone quality. Again, we don't really know. All that we can say from this study is that it seems like vegans have a higher uh, risk of wrist fracture and wrist fractures are not necessarily benign. I've treated hundreds of them and they can really be a problem for people. So it's not to say, you know, in this video, they talk about this idea that like, it's no big deal. Um, they're just wrist fractures. It's because they're more active. Nonsense. Risk fractures can be a big problem. They can lead to a lot of issues. We don't want to have a risk fracture and we can't say that vegans are more active and we can't say that vegans uh, are, are, are falling more potentially uh, or fracturing more because they're healthier people. Again, that is a, a nonsense argument. So please ignore that. Lastly, there are studies that show an increased risk of hip fracture and increased risk of spine fracture with people that eat a vegan diet compared to an omnivore diet. We cannot ignore that risk. So just keep this in mind. I'm all for freedom of speech. I'm all for making videos that, that support what somebody believes. I believe it. This is why I'm saying it because I think it's going to help the people that follow us and it certainly is helping our patients. So I have evidence of that. Um, saying though that there is no risk of making this choice that may lead you to a nutrient deficient diet. I think that that is fraudulent and I think that needs to be exposed. So my preference here is to say, if you want to eat a plant-based diet, totally fine. It's your freedom to do so, but make sure that it is a whole food plant-based diet. You're avoiding processed foods, but you are adding back all of the things that you are potentially missing through your diet. So that's going to likely be adequate protein. It's going to be B12 and other B vitamins. It's going to be creatine. It's going to be choline. It's going to be a whole list of things that you can't get through plants or you can't absorb through plants. So it is possible to eat a, a well-defined and designed whole food plant-based diet. You can be a bodybuilder. You can be very active. You can be a great performer. It's just harder. So make sure that if you're going to do it, you do it well and that you're very clear about following your biomarkers, following your bone mineral density, making sure that you're actually seeing the results that you're seeing rather than just trusting somebody who says, don't worry about the risk. It's not a big deal. What I see is that people develop metabolic uh, issues because of the increased carbohydrate. They lose muscle mass because they're not getting adequate protein. They don't feel good. Their gut doesn't function as well. So my experience is that this is not the answer and that this is likely going to make you more unhealthy, especially over the long term, but sometimes even in the short term. Okay, and the last point on this, and I'd like to just finish all of my statements about a whole food plant-based diet with a statement, which is that Eating a vegan diet will not save your health and eating a vegan diet will not save the planet. We need to focus on what is right for us and we need to focus on the big picture when it comes to the planet. That is not my place to get into, so I will leave that for another day and probably another person. But just please recognize that those things are true. That is my perspective and this is my video, so I get to say it. All right, so the next topic in question that we get so commonly is about exercise. There's a lot of research on exercise. I talk about a lot of research on exercise. So let me just summarize all of it right here, which is that 
when it comes to the traditional forms of exercise, so weightlifting, um, you know, running, swimming, cycling, you know, aerobic exercise versus, you know, yoga and Pilates, um, the king when it comes to bone density is resistance training. However, you almost can't even say that because we know that the resistance training studies alone do not show significant increase in bone mineral density. Really, if you want to improve bone mineral density, you need either impact or simulated impact through the form of osteogenic loading, which is a form of exercise. So OsteoStrong um, you know, has the equipment that it was designed by Dr. Jaquish, which is based off of the idea of simulating controlled impact. So that is great if you have access to it. Um, if you don't have access to it, a resistance training program to increase muscle mass and then an impact program to improve bone density uh, can potentially also do the same thing that has been shown in literature, but not everybody has the ability to do impact. How do you do it correctly? Are you going to hurt yourself? Please don't injure yourself, et cetera. So resistance training with impact is probably the best thing that most people can do at home, but can you do it safely? Um, how do you do it? What are the details? That's really where it gets challenging. And then if you have access to a place like OsteoStrong, uh, then you have uh, the ability to have somebody help you do that or a well-trained trainer or physical therapist or exercise physiologist that could potentially create something custom for you would be another way to do it. When it comes to yoga and Pilates, these are great modalities. There's certainly benefit. Um, there's benefit of all the potential exercise things. You know, even cycling and running and swimming have VO2 benefits, there's other aerobic benefits, those are great for longevity, they're just not necessarily great for bone. Same thing with yoga and Pilates, lots of value, flexibility, strength, core strength, you know, preventing injury, uh, balance, uh, uh, preventing falls, all of it. But will they independently increase bone mineral density? And I think the answer is pretty clearly no. Can they be part of a program that improves bone density and reverses osteoporosis? Sure. Uh, but understand what they are and understand how they fit into your own custom program to improve your bone. All right, and the third question we get often, and I just want to bring it up here, which is how can people get access to us without being patients? Because let's face it, to do a custom program with the team that we've built costs money and it is a significant investment. Not everybody has the resources to do that. Totally get that. Doesn't stop us from preventing what I think is the best way to do it. Our goal is to prevent the best program possible. Um, and then, you know, we have to support our team and we don't take insurance. So that's the, the challenge that I face as a, a business owner. But we are trying to create so much value for people outside of that. So the answer to the question of how can people get access to us, there's really two main ways. So one is if you haven't gone through our Bone Foundations course yet, I, I strongly recommend that you do that. Look for the link below. The Bone Foundations course is free. Um, we used to charge for it, but now we make it free because I'm so compelled to help people to improve their bone health and reverse osteoporosis when possible. So the Bone Foundations course is now free. It is modules. I think we have 16 at the time of this recording. We have more planned. Uh, we're always updating it. We put a lot of effort into this. So we have um, modules that we're updating. We have a workbook that goes along with them to help you customize it for you, help you to understand how to get the biomarkers, how to uh, understand them and read them. Um, we have access to our HealthSpan Nation. HealthSpan Nation is the other way uh, that you could potentially access us. So this is a, a low cost monthly fee. You can access our HealthSpan Nation. That gives you um, access to me on a weekly basis. So we have a weekly Q&A. Uh, people are coming in, interacting live, answering questions. I obviously can't give medical advice specifically, uh, but you can um, ask questions about specific program things. I can give you the, uh, the interpretation of the literature and what we're doing with our patients uh, specifically so you can understand that way. Um, also gives you access to our HealthSpan community. And this is where we have women, uh, women and men, but mostly women who are um, suffering from osteoporosis process, but also uh, in a health span perspective. So women that don't have osteoporosis who are trying to prevent it and trying to optimize their health and improve health span, all helping each other within this community also gives you access to our um, uh, affiliate codes for products and services that we have vetted and support for our patients, but also for our health span community. So look for the link for all of that in the description below. Again, the Bone Foundations course gives you access to all of it and it's free. So I'd strongly recommend that you do that. So those are our top three questions uh, for this week. And we'll do another one of these Q and A's Every, every couple of weeks or so uh, when we see that there is a, a clear, um, uh, clear pattern of questions that we can answer in a, a platform like this uh, so that we can serve more people. So I hope that you, that was helpful and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.